Hello everyone, welcome back to Airflow 101. Till the last episode, we have discussed what and why Apache Airflow and a brief overview of the architecture. In this episode, we will talk about DAGs and tasks, which are the building blocks of any workflow. Also, I will show you guys how to define a DAG file and write your own DAG. Let's start with directed acyclic graphs or DAGs. In order to learn about DAGs, we need to know what are directed graphs. And in order to know about directed graphs, we need to know what is a graph. You see what I did there? I made a workflow. So let's start with graphs. In mathematics, graph is, let me take the pointer. Uh, yeah. So in mathematics, graph is something which has nodes and edges. And directed graph, as the name suggests, has directed edges. We can see that. There is a directed edge from this node to this node. Similarly, we have directed edges. Now, directed acyclic graph, it is self-explanatory name, is a graph which has no cyclic dependencies. For example, in this directed graph, if I follow this path, I go here, 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 here. And you can see I am stuck in a cyclic dependency. And we don't want cyclic dependencies in our workflows. So, we use directed acyclic graphs. Let's follow this path. So if I start from here, 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 now I'm here and like this is the end, right? I can start from here and I'll reach here. So there are no cyclic dependencies and this is what we want in our workflow. Let's talk about DAGs with respect to Airflow. In Airflow, a DAG is a collection of tasks with defined dependencies and properties and we define them using Python programming language. This is how a DAG looks in Airflow web server. Uh, we have two tasks, dummy start and dummy end, and this is the dependency. So dummy end depends upon dummy start. Another thing I would like to talk about is DAG run. It is a sort of metadata entry in the database that tells us how many times a DAG has run. A DAG run can either be created by the scheduler or you can manually trigger a DAG to create its DAG run and a DAG can have multiple DAG runs at any given point of time. Let's talk about task. A node in the DAG represents a task and tasks are the unit of work in Airflow. And each task can be defined using operator, sensor or hook, but on a top view, those all are classified as operators. We will talk more about what operator, sensor or hooks are in the upcoming videos. Right. Similarly, I would like to talk about task instances. A task instance is a runnable entity of a task and it is run of a task in a point of time. So if we have a DAG run, a task and a point in time, we can define a task instance and task instances belong to DAG runs and tasks, they belong to a DAG. Let's take an example here. Uh, this is my Airflow web server and this is an example DAG right example branch operator right uh, this is the graph view and you can see that we have multiple tasks and all the dependencies here uh, we can see that it has some python uh, branch python operator and dummy operator uh, you don't need to go into details about what these operators do uh, but we'll talk about all of these in the upcoming videos uh, but okay let's just turn on this track So we have right now we have one DAG run and these are the task instances, right? If I just trigger this tag again, it has two DAG runs. If I trigger it again, it now has three DAG runs. So it tells me that this tag has three running instances and we have multiple task instances. And if we want to see all these task instances, we can just switch over to this tree view and it will give us the list of all the task instances corresponding to all the DAG runs, right? We have these three DAG runs and these are the task instances corresponding to them, right? We can see that this one is already completed and the rest all are running, right? If I just trigger this tag, oh, let me turn it on. So I have one DAG run, if I again trigger it, 
I'll have two tag runs, right? Uh, so I hope that uh, the concept of tag runs and task instances is clear to you all. Now let's talk about how to define a DAG. I have broken down the entire process of writing a DAG file into five smaller steps. The first one is importing modules. The second is defining default arguments. Third, creating a DAG object. Fourth, defining tasks. And fifth, we'll define our dependencies. So bring up your favorite text editor and let's get started. So I use Sublime. I will be using Sublime text. So let's start with the step one. Right, the step one is importing modules. The first thing that we need to import is from Airflow import DAG. Next thing is that we need to import some modules related to date and time. So from date time import date time and something called as time delta. Next is from we will be importing a operator, right? Uh, because we need to define task and in order to define task we will be using operators but for now I will be using a dummy operator which as the name suggests does nothing but in the upcoming videos we will be using more advanced operators and write more complicated workflows so from airflow operators dummy operator import dummy operator right step two step two is default arcs so default arcs is a dictionary that we pass to the airflow object and it contains some metadata so one is owner if you want to know more about this all the keys in the default arcs i strongly recommend that you check airflow's official documentation so this is depends on past let's keep it false uh, if I'm not explaining any uh, key we'll talk about that in the upcoming videos because right now I just want to want you all to know how you can define your DAG file right uh, we can talk about all these keys in the default tags in the upcoming videos so I'll make a separate video for that start it when we want this DAG to start date time let's keep it only and we try step 3 creating a DAG object let's name it DAG so we need to pass in a DAG ID which is a unique identifier to identify a DAG I'll keep it as DAG1 next is default DAGs into pass in the default args catch up is equal to false we'll talk more about catch up and backfill in episode 8 so don't get confused right now and the most important scheduled interval it tells the scheduler when to schedule the tag let's keep it once so this tag will only run once step 4 is creating a task so i'll be using dummy operator again we need to pass task id which is a unique identifier let's name it start and we need to pass in the dag object dag right let me just copy it and let's name it end end and step five will be creating the dependency so you can create it just like this right end task depends upon start task right now let's save it in order to airflow to pick up this tag file we need to place it in the DAG folder right and if you have watched my video where I have shown how to install airflow there I have mentioned that airflow creates a directory by the name of airflow in your home directory and there uh, we created a DAG folder and I'm going to save this over here let's me name it like DAG underscore one not by okay uh, let's move on to the web server and it'll take some st time to pick it up 
so we have our full uh, DAG file here. So Airflow periodically checks the DAG folder and we have certain configurations that we can change uh, to make it more fre frequent, right? So here is the DAG, this is how it looks. It has two tasks, start and end. Let's turn it on. Right, so this is our DAG and that's how you can create your own DAG file, right? Uh, just try to play around with DAG files and try to create more complicated DAGs and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you all for watching.